getting on testosterone replacement gives you courage. It gives you courage that you, you, you lost years ago that you um, are, are maybe wanting to take a different step or a new step or face adversity differently. And it sounds just like that. So it doesn't, it doesn't shock me that a guy who started lifting weights that got on, you know, some type of therapies is now becoming a different person in a good way. Yeah. Actually, I think got like second place in a regional bodybuilding competition. Wow. Joshua Whalen, welcome to Manifesto's YouTube channel. Thank you for having me. So you are the CEO of blokes.co, which provides rocket fuel for men um, and kind of comprehensive approach to uh, looking at men's health and, and healing the body, not just kind of like, you know, throwing some medicine at guys and trying to support them. And I've actually been looking for stuff like this uh, over here in Denmark. It seems like there's pretty much nothing in Europe, actually, that's available. Um, but found your guy's website and thought it really looked nice. And so we've had a chat already and decided like, hey, let's put together a little YouTube chat um, because you had a really interesting story uh, as well. So maybe you want to tell a little bit like, uh, who's Joshua? What are you doing? And how did you get started with this whole uh, blokes, blokes thing? Sure, man. Josh Whalen, uh, CEO and founder of Blokes. Been in healthcare for about 14 years. Uh, had the entrepreneurial bug pretty much since I've been in healthcare. And, and Blokes was started in my personal journey uh, as a patient. Uh, and being the entrepreneur I was, I, I saw opportunity. And my wife was actually a catalyst. She said, hey, dude, if you don't get your hormones checked and we don't start getting a little bit more sexual in bed, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to divorce you. And, and, and it kind of, oh, she was it. that straight. <laughs> oh, she was that straight, my man. It was, it was a, it was a very freight conversation and, and it was a, a process, uh, for a guy like me to, to hear that. But I also saw the opportunity and, and starting a business that could, could deliver really good health to, to men, uh, in a virtual manner, uh, and specifically focused around testosterone. Yeah, so maybe we can just go draw back a little bit to like the kind of societal situation because, you know, I, I think I first became aware of this like four or five years ago. Uh, and then I remember there was like this Tucker Carlson segment where he spoke about like, you know, the state of masculinity on men or something right. like that. And But because it's like hard to know, but, but, apparent, but apparently like, you know, testosterone levels on average in Western society have just like, you know, the bottoms basically fallen out of it or something like that. Do you? Can you give us a bit of that, the, the details there? Yeah, massively. There's actually a really good article in Forbes that was written years ago. Uh, the title of the article is, You're Not the Man Your, Your Grandfather Was. And, and we are seeing steep declines from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, till now in men's testosterone levels. And that can be from an abundant amount of factors. One is the health, exercise, diet, surrounding factors, environmental factors that you can and can't control, stress. Uh, we just live in a, a different society. I mean, we have these phones that are that are at our side all the time, and, and you're constantly getting these cortisol effects that will drastically reduce uh, your, your testosterone levels. But it's true, man. Um, not only not only that do we have these societal and environmental factors, but biologically, it just is a fact. When you start hitting that 30 to 35 year old mark, the only place your testosterone levels are going to go is down. Uh, and we know that it's no less than one percent on on average uh, for a man every year. So, you know, when you have environmental factors, when you have stress factors, when you also just have the biological clock ticking, uh, you know, it, it's working against you in terms of just that male masculinity. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I have a one and a half year old running around at home now. And I've, uh -oh. I've also read like, that's also like a killer for testosterone, right? Uh, well, you get lots of oxytocin, of course, like the, <laughs> the kid, cut leg and stuff like that. But just notice, like, I got to work a little bit harder to get rid of uh, that extra belly fat. Um, well, it's, it, that's a great point. And, and, and we should talk about that because mm -hmm. one thing that men are not aware of is when a woman, when your partner is pregnant, a lot of things change in a man. There's really four things that, that can change drastically. One is testosterone. There are studies that show that men's testosterone can drop up to 75% when the woman is conceiving. That's a substantial amount. So what happens then? Belly fat starts to accrue. Um, another thing that start to happen is cortisol levels change meaning they get worse. Uh, so that's, uh, that's your stress hormone, which is a huge anti-inflammatory marker. There's even studies that show prolactin in men increases. And, and one of the reasons that prolactin increases is they say that it, it helps with 
the awareness of the, uh, of the child coming into into the world where for women it's it's making you know breast milk so there's a lot of things that can change when the woman is going through that pregnancy so it's not a coincidence that you got belly fat it's not a coincidence that you're probably sleeping worse uh and recovery is a huge deal when it comes to just male hormones I'm, I'm really focused on like getting good sleep. So my son also has very clear boundaries about what we do and what we don't do at nighttime. But um, okay, can you t talk a little bit more about testosterone? I think that's for me the most sure. interesting thing here uh, and, and the central thing. Um, so like, you know, what is testosterone? What does it do for men? I've been yeah. told something like testosterone is the hormone that, you know, makes it feel good to do hard stuff. And that's yeah. why men are so good at doing hard stuff. But, but, and then maybe also what are the signs that like testosterone levels are low? Uh, can you give us a bit more of a, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, men and women alike, uh, testosterone is an extremely important marker, it's particularly in men. It's, it's one of our most important markers. And, uh, you know, all it is is a hormone. It's a chemical messenger that's telling our body how to act and behave. Mm -hmm. uh, that's being produced primarily in your testes and sending a signal to your brain and, and telling your brain how to react. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's, it's something that men need. It's something that's extremely important. And it's something that you have to be aware of when you start hitting certain age groups, 30, 35, 40 years old. And certain things that you can look for is, you know, is, is, is my mood off? Is my energy levels off? Uh, is my mental clarity off? Is my sex drive off? Am I experiencing erectile dysfunction? Am I gaining some fat in my, in my belly where I typically didn't? Those are always good signs to say, hey, listen, it's time to take a step back. Am I feeling symptomatic, but can I confirm that with a blood test? And it's really, really simple to get those confirmations uh, and know where you're at as a male, especially as you're aging. I recommend every man at a certain age group, you know, 30, 35, start getting at least an annual blood check to be, to be cognizant of where you're at in your health. Cause you want to, you want to have markers that you can look for as baselines as you grow and as you age. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Do you know, I mean, I've actually, I've looked into this in Europe just online and I actually wasn't able to find anywhere where I could get a testosterone level check. Uh, I have no idea if it's possible, but I mean, you guys do this privately through your website, right? You offer right these tests yeah 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 we, we we do it in two manners one is uh we can we can send you to a local lab uh primarily lab core quest uh and then we can do at home testing uh little little less capabilities on the at home testing but it can give us pretty much everything we need to make a decision in terms of treatment. Mm -hmm. And now that you bring it up about Europe, I, I, I'm, I'm curious now, if we should start exploring that and see what, why that's not, a, you know, an abundant pathway for men uh, in, in, in Europe, because I, I think, you know, just like, just like the United States, everybody's suffering from this at some point or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it seems like there's just so little focus on it as well. You know, like it, it's, it's something that a lot of people aren't aware of, you know, men are, historically bad at like being proactive about their health you know i think certainly my father and pretty much everybody i know's father you know like he'd almost have to be like having a heart attack to get him to the doctor kind of thing right like it's just not the way that we did things and and so you know there's there's a great aspect of that kind of stoic you know like okay i'm just going to keep on going and this isn't all about me kind of thing but at the end of the day like you know we want we want to be able to be tuning the machine to be able to work it work better right than to be able to be as effective as we can for as long as we can be mm -hmm. yeah i i think I, you bring up a good point men men are masculine right they, they're told from little little ages that uh you know to to rub it off or or to you know move forward pain is nothing and and i think that carries over to when we become adults. And I think that, well, we know it carries over into then seeing a physician. Because at, at what point are you really ready to go see a physician? Uh, you gotta be in an enormous amount of pain as, as a man in, in often cases. And, and you know, it's oftentimes the woman or, or your partner that's nudging you to say, hey, listen, you've been in pain for a long time, or hey, you're starting to feel you know, symptomatic and I'm starting to see some changes. So there are oftentimes a catalyst that pushes you towards that physician. Now, the second battle is making sure you're getting good care when you see that physician, mm -hmm. making sure and ensuring that you're seeing somebody who specializes in testosterone replacement, somebody that is an expert in hormone therapy. And if you're not getting that, well, you, you may as well not go to the physician to begin with. So if you're experiencing symptoms and, and you're, you're a guy, I mean, at some point, just 
do it for yourself, do it for your family, do it for your wife, do it for your kids, because testosterone is a huge anti-inflammatory marker that can help you over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, in Denmark, here I am, then we have a situation that there is government paid healthcare. Uh, There is pretty much no such thing as like going to a private doctor. Uh, The private healthcare that there is, is normally making their business from relieving government waiting lists for, you know, certain operations. I know like MRI scans is like a super, super long waiting list for it. So then they, they have to pay private uh, healthcare people to, to do, to help them to yeah. get through the waiting list. So, but like, as far as just like going to a normal doctor's concert, it's all, it's all public and you have 15 minutes not just for the consultation, but also for like the, the, the doctor needs to like read your journal, have the consultation with you and then like, you know, write the prescriptions or give the references or whatever. That's 15 minutes in total. That's the, that's the whole thing, right? So they're, they're basically just like, you know, an end level bureaucrat that's there to kind of like, you know, send you on in the system in whichever way it is. And, and certainly in, in my experience, yeah, they're like, so I've asked a doctor about this and they're like, they're like, oh no, you don't have any of the indications that we would need, you know, like to that for, for getting a testosterone <laughs> check on the yeah, government yeah. money. Right. So it's like right. it's obviously not something they're budgeted uh, in their system as well. Um, well, I hope that changes for you guys. I hope that there, there becomes this emergence of private payers and that's what we call them in the States or concierge style medicine so that you can own your own health. And, 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 you know, I mean, nobody knows your body better than you do, uh, including the physicians. And oftentimes that's a mechanism in, in terms of physician oversight and saying, hey, listen, if we don't cover it, if you're not at a certain age group, we're just not even gonna check for it, regardless of how symptomatic you are. And I think that's unfair to the patient. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I definitely think that there's space for offerings like what you have over here in Europe, where we have such, a large scale private, uh, sorry, public healthcare sector and like, you know, very little public offerings. But I think in something as specific as this, and, and it seems like there's a growing awareness amongst guys of this kind of thing. Um, you know, like, I, I think there's a kind of meta discussion happening. And I, I think you're related to it in some way as well as like about like masculinity. Um, and a lot of guys have kind of like, you know, testosterone's, I think it's, it's, testosterone kind of like gets tied up in that thing and it's almost seen you know by some people as like the hormone of aggression and right. you know tyrannical dominance or something yeah. like that yeah and and i think that certainly in europe here since this whole russia ukraine thing happened then that's kind of shifted like suddenly there's been a more of an awareness of like you know we we want strong strong powerful men actually because like our safety is dependent on it right uh it's a, that's a, that's a good way to look at it. All of a sudden, when you're in this fight or flight mentality, all of a sudden the masculinity changes. Right. And, and, and you like you said, all of a sudden you want these strong men, um, you know, mm-hmm. maybe it, maybe it's a hormone that nobody talks about until, until it's actually time to talk about it. And in my case, it was when we weren't having an active sex life in my, in my marriage. So, yeah. you know, you look at it in times of war, you do want masculine guys. Yeah. Yeah, but it's also very clear, like, this is what attracts women as well, as, as a guy totally. who, who is connected to his own masculinity, his own right. power, um, right. and, and just the energy levels, as you spoke about as well, like, that, that's um, such, a, such a major thing. Um, I mean, at Manifesto, we work very much with some of the same issues and, and problems, I think, that you're addressing with guys, you know, so we just actually had a discussion last week about, you know, pe- how many men have like, you know, different types of sexual dysfunction as well. And I, sure. I think that's also part of it. But I guess you kind of like, you're, you're coming from a physical, biological perspective, but you must have brushes with all the psychological aspects of being a man all the time as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, I think people look at testosterone, it's just a physical thing, strength, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, what, what's actually happening in the body is sending signals to the brain. So if your testosterone levels are off, your mental levels are probably being affected by that as well. You're probably more stressed, you're probably more anxious, which ultimately leads to a lot of different physical attributes in a negative way. So they go hand in hand. If your testosterone's low, you, you, you're probably in a mental state that that's, that's probably, you're probably having more mood symptoms. Um, you're probably off to be from a stress perspective. And I think it's important that, that people understand that it's kind of the circle of life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. You said the circle of life. So, so yeah, we, when we're having this discussion about sexuality, then 
we, um, and this video is also just uploaded on our podcast. Uh, we had a doctor called Dietmar Betz, uh, who was a urologist, works yeah. especially with guys with, you know, um, sexual dysfunction and erect erectile dysfunction, stuff like that. Um, and he says that in his work, he's found like it's so, you know, he, he's very well grounded in a biological, physical approach to the body as his primary reference point. But as he's been working more and more, then he's seen like, well, certainly the psychological aspects play in so much when it comes to sexuality. And there's all these kind of things that are in, in put into us as well. But then what he also had as well, and, and he, he also exactly used the circle of life term as he said, there's, well, there's a spiritual aspect of that. Sure. And, and so he just talked about like the cycles of life. And he talks about like, you know, he had, he had a picture of a guy lying on an ice floe uh, and then talking about like North, South, East and West. And, you know, the, in, I think it was like in the North of your life, then, you know, there's this phase and you go to the next phase and where you're learning wisdom and developing, and then you're expanding and then you're taking responsibility. And then, then you're, you know, entering into kind of like the soul sex type of your life or something like that. But, you know, you can't, you, you there's a natural progression to things and, and you have to accept right. that as well. Yeah. Um, and, and he said, like, you know, this is something that like ancient wisdom has always taught us, but our modern society is somehow, you know, like we're, we're constantly getting sold quick fixes that can like resolve all our problems right now that aren't taking this into account, right? Yeah, no, that's a good point. I, I you know, a lot of our competitors in, in our space are, uh, we, we say here at, at Blokes, we don't throw pills at problems, right? There's always a quick fix. Hormones mm -hmm. are not a quick fix. I mean, it can take months. It can take years before you dial them in. But could you imagine as a guy getting an erection when you didn't before just because your hormones were dialed in? I mean, what, what a better way to do it than just throw a pill out of a problem, you know? So I, I agree with everything he's saying. And uh, I think hormones are oftentimes the foundation of life, it, mentally, physically, spiritually, because um, they all play a key role. Yeah. So would you say Viagra is is the quick fix? Is, is that Absolutely. what you're referring to as well? You bet. Yeah. Yeah, that. that's, I mean, it's a kind of like a symptom reliever, but not actually going to the root of the problem. It, it is, it is absolutely not going to the root of the problem. Yeah. Um, and, and, and listen, it's, it's massively manufactured. It's easy to get in the hands of consumers. Uh, there's a lot of margin in it when you're pushing it out. Hormones are a lot more challenging. If you came to me and you said, Hey man, I just want to dial my hormones. We're talking, you know, a 30 day process before we even know where you're at from a hormonal perspective. And then another three to six months that we're dialing it in. Most guys aren't dialed in between six months to a year. Now you came to me and you said, Hey man, I'm having erectile dysfunction. I can easily just throw you some Viagra Cialis, right? That's going to fix the problem, but it's only going to fix it for a short term. Yeah. 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 Certainly. I, I have a strong belief that like, you know, what's happening down there for me is probably more of a reflection often of my you know subconscious state or something like that and sure. sometimes yeah. it's like i might think like oh i really want to have sex right now but maybe there's actually a reason for these things happening and it's there's a deeper issue that that's right aspect. so so yeah i i can certainly see that and and it's there's this like massive societal kind of story about the virile man who can like you know just lay down woman and like has the heart <laughs> erection and can like ejaculate like you know half a liter <laughs> all over the yeah. place or something like that like that's like somehow you know and, and i guess it's like a, a mind fit on pornography as well which is just yeah that's exactly what it is but it's like well that's actually got very little to do with real sex actually and, and right. maybe you know what's what's happening is that you're you know somehow sensing like you know what it is your partner or whatever it is that's where you guys are at and maybe you should actually be talking right now or something like that um, you, you know that did you bring it up my, my wife said we started having real sex when you started listening to me right it's not just about you know bending your wife over your partner over and just plowing her, right like you said uh and it's certainly not a pornography show right but but you know when i when i was finally able to listen to my wife um listen to her needs and, 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 you know, act upon those needs is when our relationship really made the turn for the better. Uh, and now we have an extremely healthy sex life, you know, and, but, but it, it wouldn't exist without sex drive. And, you know, for me, I was, I'm sitting there as a guy in my mid thirties going, where the hell is my sex drive? I have no idea where this thing went. You know, I played rugby for 12 years. I was your masculine guy that pump weights. Uh, and, and I had no idea what the hell was going on. So it, it was good that I was finally able to isolate the problem for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
So what 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 age was that? You you were a professional. You've been a high level rugby player, right? And yeah. Then, and then yeah. what did this happen suddenly, or did it kind of like did it slowly come in, or yeah? Yeah. yeah so so what happened what for? Yeah, I was I was in my mid thirties when I started noticing signs of low low testosterone. There was there was something catastrophic or, or many catastrophic events that happened in our life. We had fertility struggles. We had four miscarriages. Mm -hmm. And like I talked about in the earlier segment, men are not aware that things can change as a woman becomes pregnant. I got into that rut and we just never got out of it. I got to a point where I said, you know, I don't even want kids. We had four miscarriages in two, two, two and a half years. I didn't even want to have sex because I didn't want a baby, you know, but I didn't realize the, the, the compounding effect it was having on me in, in more ways than just sex drive. You know, it was, it was messing me up in the gym. It was messing me up at work. I was having mood swings. Uh, and, and finally, it, it took my own due diligence to understand what was happening through the woman's pregnancy. So it, it was a slow process, but when it, when it got really bad, I, I, I knew it and I had to take care of it. Great. Yeah. So, what I've been warning is I want you to explain to me what are peptides because I know I've heard quite a bit about testosterone, but I can see that you, a lot of what you guys do as well as peptides. So, yeah. what are peptides about, and <laughs> what do they do, and yeah, what what I'm I'm a total beginner, so <laughs> yeah, I, I like to I like to break it down on on more common knowledge when I, when I explain peptides. The most most abundantly produced peptide in the world is insulin. We've been using insulin for you know, 50, 60, 70 years. Mm -hmm. And as you know, the, the human body cannot live without insulin. That's why you have type one, and type two diabetes. Mm -hmm. So that's really the biggest peptide that we manufacture on a regular basis. But peptides are, are flowing through our body naturally. We have you know, roughly 7,000 peptides. Uh, all they are you know, short chain of amino acids and they're the building blocks for proteins. The beauty about peptides, unlike hormones, is they do really direct things well. You, you can have, I mean, we have so many peptides in our bodies. We have so many peptides that we can manufacture. You can have a peptide that can help produce growth hormone. You can have a peptide that helps with inflammation, gut health. You can have a peptide that helps with weight loss. You can have a peptide that helps with mental clarity. Uh, there's, there's, there's a whole category of different peptides, but the, the great thing about them is, is they're easy to administer. I, I tell every patient, I tell everybody I talk to, they're extremely uh, high reward, low risk type products. Um, and you're never shutting down the body's natural production when you're adding a peptide to your body. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. So a lot to take in. Yeah, yeah. So, no, so yeah. Totally. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a, at all a biologist, <laughs> so no, it's a, it, I don't know. Me I, either. I, but I think I think that makes sense. Um, the the thing that kind of stays in my mind is is you know like, how does this play into a, a lot of these things? You know, if the body is in being used healthily, <laughs> uh, then you don't always, or at least that can like reduce the need for a lot of these things as well. And so, oh, yeah. you know, like, I assume you're also recommending to your clients, like, you know, you, it's good to do sports or like, you know, to lift yeah. some weights or do stuff that like activates the body's natural production of these things. Right. Um, but how do you kind of like navigate that path? Cause I know a lot of people, they struggle to that. We have these sedentary <laughs> lifestyles where we're just sitting in front of a computer all the time. And uh, yeah, so I don't know, when does this become like a crutch? or yeah. a, a, a pillow that we're sleeping on and not kind of, you know, right. getting ourselves together and, and doing, doing the work that needs to happen. Yeah, I think, I think there's, a, there's a massive curiosity when it comes to hormones and there's a massive curiosity in society when it comes to peptides. We have two types of patients, right? We have needs, people who actually need it and are showing a lot of symptoms. And then we have the want category. And the want is, you know, somebody who's wanting to maybe optimize to a different level maybe wasn't achieving the certain goals, but that doesn't mean they're unhealthy, but maybe wants to get to a different level. Maybe they're training for an event. Maybe they, you know, just want to brush up on, on, on certain things, maybe weight loss. Um, so we categorize every patient into a need and a want, but if you're not ready to make change, and if you're not ready to commit to a different lifestyle, these things are only as effective as that. So, you know, we always say that the most, successful patient is the patient that's really willing to make change and if you're willing to make change you're going to see better results and more quicker results yeah 
And I think I think that probably long term sounds like a very good strategy for, you know, you're not just promising magic magic pill that bing you take this thing and everything's going to be good. Sure. Um, and and so you're actually you know because at the end of the day, I, I think yeah like you know th there's no magic fixes, uh, and and so people need to commit to like okay well I do want to you know be living a better life uh, for yep. that actually to happen, and, and these things can be helps along the way I guess. Yeah, I, I, we this is what we say to our our, our patients. If there's a finish line, we're going to get you there quicker. But you have to follow the program. You have to follow the protocol. The more you get in line with with, with a healthy lifestyle, working out, um, doing things to improve everything that that helps these products or these therapies work better, the quicker you're going to get there. No doubt in my mind there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Joshua, I think uh, I've uh, got a lot of good information out of you. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. Um, anything you want to add uh, to, to to this conversation? Um, no, I love it, man. I mean, it, it, the masculinity hormone is testosterone, man. So we, we're, we're we're talking about it. I hope that uh, more people in Europe start understanding this um, because aging is is part of life. Uh, but it doesn't have to be a, a hard part of life. And, you know, hopefully more people get better access to, you know, hormone therapy. Yeah. There's a guy in our network. He's actually an Orthodox priest. Uh, and he's also a bodybuilder. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, this guy, he, he lived the first 58 years, 60 years of his life, something like that doing everything that he was supposed to do and being like that good guy, right? Like to his wife, to his colleagues, to everywhere he had to be. Um, and came to a point where he realized like he hadn't really pursued the things that he wanted. And he was, you know, just too much of, he, he, he didn't have any kind of assertiveness. So anytime he got into a conflict situation, then he would kind of, um, he would, he would, you know, have his, his heart would start beating. He would start getting sweaty palms and, yeah. you know, he'd feel really uncomfortable and he kind of have to withdraw. Right. There was this kind of like, you know, almost a big, and he's told this story publicly. So I don't think, you know, I mean, some people might be able to realize who he is, but, but, you know, so, so he, he realized like, well, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not actually even capable of doing the things and achieving things that I want to do with my own life. And it's not serving me. It's not serving the people around me. It's not serving my family. And I'm not even able to do my job as effectively as I would be able to do. Right. And so, so what he did actually is then he, um, I don't know exactly the story behind it, but he somehow got managed to get himself into bodybuilding. <laughs> and then he got into some of the stuff that you guys are offering in, on, on, sure. your, on, your, on your website as well. And, yeah. and, and like, oh, just to like see the transformation in this guy, you can just see a picture, you know, from one year to, you know, I think it took like, you know, it was a process of like a year, two years, something like that. But today, just like an incredibly powerful directed and, amazingly interesting man who has wow. opinions and direction and stuff like that right uh, yeah i think that he's a great he's a great example of 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 like how just having something like that can help helped him to like you know just dial up the assertiveness kind of dial a little bit not in a yeah. dominating controlling tyrannical way but in a way that's like okay well i know these things are good and true but i'm not even able to like live it myself because you know i'm right. whatever i'm so used to just you know not being able to stand firm in my masculine being, right? And so that's, I guess. That's, that's an incredible transformation. I, I will tell you, um, a lot of times I tell guys um, that getting on testosterone replacement gives you courage. It gives you courage that you, you, you lost years ago that you um, are, are maybe wanting to take a different step or a new step or face adversity differently. And it sounds just like that. So it doesn't, it doesn't shock me that a guy who started lifting weights that got on, you know, some type of therapies is now becoming a different person in a good way. Yeah. Actually, I think got like second place in a regional bodybuilding competition wow. uh, in his States as well. So that was pretty mean in the age of like, you know, up in his sixties or something like That's that. Amazing. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Joshua, thanks very much. Uh, great, great. Uh, bet, brother. With that, we're, I'll share your website link uh, yeah. in the description here. Um, and yeah, really, um, you know, I, I haven't dived into these things myself. Uh, if uh, let's see if the if the stomach, um, <laughs> I've got my local men's group here. We're going out running and <laughs> doing stuff. And so right now, that's my t testosterone replacement therapy. Sure.
but uh, I know where to go. Uh, if uh, if that starts failing me, then I'm going to have to uh, uh, get a little bit of extra an extra shot. So yeah, thanks Thank very you. much, Joshua. You bet. Thanks for having me, brother. Great.